please say this looks better because uh, don't be me. Finish the deep clean before you move in. And from the comments from my last video, I realized that Jade got a point. So today I'm gonna go through the checklist that y'all should be checking when moving to a new place, including the things you should be deep cleaning and or replacing. Could even fit everything in one video. So if you like it, let me know, I'll do another one. But this one is already 20 minutes. I don't expect your attention span to be that long cause mine ain't. Let's just get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean it. Why? Because the first thing that should always touch any surface is soap. Baby, you need some soap, some kind of cleanser. And of course, yes, this is so that you're like actually disinfecting things before you go investigating. But also it's to see if soap gets rid of it. Cause at this point, if you don't know the substance, then technically you don't know the type of cleanser you need to combat it, eliminate it, remove, deodorize, whatever. You follow this channel regularly, then you already know Castile soap. When they say 10 and one, they not lying. I use it for almost everything. From the looks of it, I suspect that this is actually baking soda because you get this chalky residue when you spill baking soda in water, it dries, evaporates, and then yeah. But we're not quite done yet because although I've removed that initial layer, I now need to get to um, like the burnt on stuff on the bottom of the oven, which if it's a thin layer, technically you can just go in with, again, some baking soda. Predominantly dry, just like the slightest bit moist because that will create enough abrasiveness. If it's built up, however, you can either go in with something with more texture, like still wool, or my favorite, a scraper because ain't nobody got time for that. I said I wanted it to be clean, not that I wanted it to be squatting here for three hours. But as anyone who owns a shower knows, the thing about soap is, yeah, it can leave a film. This is why you don't want to use more than a couple of drops. I might have overdid it, but that's because my food is going in here. Better too much than not enough, you know what I mean? So I'm going in with citric acid, again, like you guys saw in the last video, using a fresh rag as well. If you don't have this, you can also use vinegar. And then I'm going to go in with a clean towel. The reason we do this is because soap is very alkaline. I believe the Dr. Bronner's especially is like a 10 on the pH scale. So we're now on the opposite side of the spectrum at around two or three. You can use them one or after the other, but not together because then they just cancel each other out, rendering them non-effective. I'm not sure about other surfactants because I don't use other ones, but Castile, definitely not. And depending on the model of your stove, you may also be able to get in between the two panes that separate the inside and outside glass. Something you might want to put on the to-do list if it doesn't look that clear. Thirdly, you can also use it on the stainless steel. Jump scare y'all because this one, I was not prepared for it. You don't want to see something bad, don't look under your faucets. But also do, because do you really want to be washing dishes with this looking like that? Mm. First of all, why is it green? It's just mineral buildup, same as the shower that I replaced. So again, I'm going in with the citric acid.
you probably think I'm skipping ahead because we ain't get to the sink yet, but no baby, trust me, the dishwasher need to go first because I already knew this was going to be bad. Therefore, I wanted to do the sink after. So do yourself a favor, look up the make and model of your dishwasher and see how to get the filter just so that you can get a brief review of how to disassemble. Because I know a lot of them have filters that you can much more easily get to than this, but as you can see, I had that option. And by the way, for the faucet, you saw me attempting to possibly remove the screen. Ultimately, I didn't just because I wasn't able to get it out. Just know that is an option and you can usually pick them up for pretty cheap. Now, as far as cleaning, my favorite sponge alternative, both eco-friendly and sustainable, is loofah. Because you can buy a large quantity of compressed ones, which will take up very little space, or the entire fruit, and then you can just cut it up as you need it. And despite the way they may look, they're actually pretty soft, so they're not going to scratch anything. If you do need something that's gritty that you can scrub with, then I still recommend the ones that are made out of coconut husk. And by the way, anything that I'm using, cleaners, tools, ingredients, all that. Normally it'd go on the blog, but the site is currently under construction. So I've linked everything down in the description box. I'd like to have everything just like in one place on the blog, but currently it is under construction. I think it needs a revamp. So you can find everything in the description box instead of the website, which by the way, is very easy to do. You can either drag everything to this portion of like your menu, which will make it invisible. You can leave some stuff and not others. You can create an entirely new page, like a cover page or landing page that says coming soon or under construction, or literally not make the page public at all and keep it under password. So again, usability, easy to navigate as usual. If you're a creator wanting to run a blog, create an online shop, or just have a portfolio on the internet, you can run any type of platform with Squarespace and run a newsletter and use their bio sites to link all of your social media channels. So you've got options and you can get a discount with my code ABETWEENE or just head to squarespace.com backslash ABETWEENE. I don't know if y'all can see it here, but there's so many like orange tinted stains on this thing. Now, another thing that I like about using loofah is, again, it looks very porous, right? But it's not. So when I'm washing dishes or just cleaning things that are really yuck, like this, you know, if I get food in it, it just rinses right out. And remember I said it's soft. That means it's also really flexible so that you can get into smaller areas. And clearly you can break it apart to make smaller pieces. So depending on how hard you're cleaning, I mean, you can get quite a few uses out of this. And then when you're ready, you can throw it in the compost.
I'm still using Castile soap for everything, but instead of rinsing with vinegar and water, I'm gonna run a cycle, but put a bowl with vinegar in it. All right, so now we can finally finish the sink, which means I can take this out. Some of these aren't detachable, so if it doesn't come out, don't worry. I'm gonna soak that in vinegar because what I really wanna address is the garbage disposal. If you have an ice maker, perfect, dump all of it out because we're simultaneously gonna run some hot water. And the combination of the two does this, disgusting. The reason why I use vinegar is because it kills um, certain mold spores and that's exactly what you want when it comes to old food. I'm going in with a brush and the vinegar then following that up with, you guessed it, soap. And go in again with a bamboo q-tip because this has a lot of folds and as you can see there was still a lot of dirt hiding in there. If you don't have a detail brush, get one. Now you already know what I'm cleaning the sink with, but to finish and polish it, I am using a specific stainless steel cleaner. It's the equivalent to like a barkeeper's friend, but this one is made specifically for cookware, so I'm comfortable using it in the sink. And once the sink is just done, I throw a little bit of baking soda into my garbage disposal. Then I'll put on the rubber seal and dry it. No need to put in any vinegar unless you're actually trying to create that bubbling action to maybe dislodge a blockage in the drain because we want the baking soda to deodorize. You're just neutralizing it by adding the acid the same way you would with the soap. Unless you're trying to make Drano, just leave it alone. Next up is the microwave. This I have used and have therefore already cleaned, but thanks to whatever it is that had tomatoes in it, this is the aftermath. I'm gonna show you how to clean that in like five minutes. Just take a heat safe pitcher, put in some water and either some citric acid, vinegar, or straight up lemons or limes, heat it up for one to two minutes. And then I use that same liquid to like wipe it down. Or if you go for longer, then there should be like actual condensation on the inside of the microwave. So then you can just take your rag and wipe it out. Or you can actually dip it into the liquid like I did. Just please be careful because it will be really hot. So gloves are a good idea. And that's when I realized there's still plastic on this.
And then for the racks that I never use, I'm actually using a melamine sponge. You could use any of the other alternatives to scrub them, like the baking soda, but this is just quicker. However, keep in mind, the reason for that is, is because melamine sponges are just like super smooth grit sandpaper. So any surface that you use them on, you need to be aware that you are technically slightly removing like the, the thinnest layer. In this case, it's whatever's burnt on, but on something like a wall, it's removing a little bit of paint. Usually not enough to notice, but if you're really scrubbing it, then yeah. For any surface that's like high gloss, just no. It's gonna turn it matte even if it's slightly and you're gonna see the difference, at least if you're me. If you're me, you will. Anything that does have a coating that you don't want to disturb, don't use it on that. And then I did clean these with soap afterwards. I don't know about you, but I'm tired, okay? Just know that this did not all happen in one day because my ADHD could never. I, I, I don't even know what that is, but you know what I did, right? Mm-hmm. Soap. Did nothing. But in that process, I learned that it was something sticky. So I went in with an essential oil. Did you see how fast that was? Now you'll notice in the original request, part of the checklist is things that you should not just deep clean, but also replace. And if this don't qualify, I don't know what does. Cause if it was up to me, this whole unit would be in the trash. However, I wanted to show the cleaning process because you're not always gonna want to replace things. Cause unless you plan on having that exact same model when you leave, cause you should be taking it with you. Is it really worth it? I am not spending no more money outside of the makeovers that is. If it ain't something fun, it ain't happening, love. If it was more reasonable, maybe. But this alone was like $20. I pulled out the whole arsenal. Soap, vinegar, steam, and a melamine sponge, and another all-purpose cleaner.
By the way, not shown here, I also disinfected all of the buttons, knobs. And clearly the previous tenant didn't care to read because if like me, you notice that blue residue around this area, I'm pretty sure that's tied, but this is for bleach only. So definitely assuming that there's some residue in the drum. Therefore, I'm gonna use some washing machine tablets, plural, because I use more than one. These are relatively inexpensive, but if you already have um, sodium percarbonate, which is oxygen clean powder and washing soda, you can use those. These have a couple more ingredients, but that's the bulk of it. Then after I run that cycle, I do another one with, you guessed it, vinegar. So this is a recap of everything that we've done for the kitchen and the laundry. In my first moving vlog, you saw a glimpse of what I did in the bathroom and the bedroom. But if you want me to continue, let me know.